what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so a lot of you have been asking me to do a review on my Aluma Tilt trailer so today we're gonna do exactly that so stay tuned All right guys, so, so I've had the trailer for about a year and so far it's been nothing but awesome. Now I did make a couple of changes here in the back. I ended up cutting the taillights off from where they were welded to, sticking out this way and I ended up flipping them on the side because I got sick and tired of bashing my knee into it. So I actually just used two riv nuts, put them in here, took out the taillight put the bolts in and that was fairly simple easy to do I also did have to grind some of these sharp edges down because when you're running around and you're trying to get your stuff together you're constantly bashing your knee into it um, I think that's the only drawback that I had as far as the trailer being brand new other than that absolutely no issues with it yet I mean I've been using it and abusing it for a year I did get the optional black wheels that's why these wheels might be a little different from what you guys might be looking at the lighting is all LED and I'm still I still have no issues with any of the lights with the trailer I ended up buying a billet uh, trailer hitch adjustable and this has been worth every penny just because I continuously go between the Lincoln and the Jeep towing the trailer. And for me, it's super easy to adjust. All I do is pop the key in here, put down the wheel, take out the pins, lower the wheel or pick up the wheel to wherever I need to be, put it back in and it's adjusted. And that thing is beefy. One small drawback is this thing is pretty flimsy and as you can tell the wheel is starting to wear down from me constantly moving the trailer around don't get me wrong it does the job it's not like it's a complete POS um, but with time probably a good idea to upgrade to something better this whole setup here everything seems to be holding well and the tilt still works like it should perfectly so my concern was it with it, is it gonna tilt if I put the Can-Am on there? Um, motor being in the back, is it actually gonna tilt with the Can-Am on there? And yes, it does. Also on that video, apparently a bunch of professional tow masters chimed in telling me that I don't have enough weight on the tongue of the trailer, which was totally BS. So a bunch of people started telling me that it was gonna sway like crazy because the Can-Am has all the weight in the back. Well, in reality, no, it's actually pretty evenly distributed. It has the right tongue weight and even cruising across the states at 80, 85 miles an hour with the trailer, I had zero sway and zero issues and it works like a charm. Honestly, this is probably one of the best trailers that I've had and one of the best trailers that I've towed with um, just for the fact because it's super lightweight. Even the lifted Jeep has zero issues towing the Can-Am on this trailer and it works perfectly. These uh, stake pockets that are all around, there's three on each side, they're kind of useless to me so I kind of wish that they would have done more tie downs. If you guys have the ability to weld aluminum or you could take it to a shop and you could have some more of these uh, tie downs added if you need it. One other thing that I do want to mention is for the fact that the trailer is actually super quiet. Even if the trailer is empty, there's no rattling, banging or any sort of weird noises. Uh, looks like all the aluminum is holding up. The welds are pretty good for the majority of the part. All the structural stuff is pretty, uh, pretty decent on the trailer. There are a couple of welds that I'm kind of questioning. Other than that, as far as structural welds, all those look perfect and everything looks really good. I mean, they're super clean. Looks like they had enough penetration cleaning on it. There are certain spots like this that 
you're kind of like, okay, well, you did an awesome job everywhere else. Why is this one kind of weird? A year ago, this trailer was actually a lot cheaper, brand new. Right now, I was looking it up online and it's significantly more. I know it's the whole inflation BS. And also, if you're looking to get an aluminum trailer, jump on it now because chances are it's probably gonna go up even higher. So I did have to use ramps on this once when we were loading up a bunch of quads and stuff and I had to pull in from the side and have everything lined up side to side. So I was using ramps just going up the side and it worked perfectly. If you guys are wondering what this is on here, I, I just have a backup whip strapped to the trailer just in case I break a whip and I need to have a backup or whatnot. All right, let me get the Can-Am on here and show you guys how it goes on, how it looks and how I strap it down and how it all works. So it's just as simple as that. The tilt works the way that it should, super easy to do. And I'm gonna show you guys how I strap it down. So one of the things that I really like to use is these tie downs uh, for the Can-Am. And these are actually from Kamimono.com. I'll put a link in the description. Um, they are actually pretty decent. Can-Am ships from the factory with the uh, suspension compressed. And essentially what they do is they use similar brackets right here on the frame. They have straps that have the suspension completely um, compressed. It fits in the box. It kind of breaks in the springs and all that stuff. But unfortunately for us, the dealer never lets these go. Um, they either toss them or I have no idea what else they do with them. But there are some companies out there like Kemimoto that makes these brackets and these are actually nicely welded um, they have a nice bend to it nice big loop opening they are powder coated um, these are made out of steel and they work and fit great i also like that this slot channel is longer than some of the other ones out there on the market meaning when you put it on it actually goes in pretty far and it's angled out for the strap which works out perfect for me that's the location for the back it's obviously on both sides and the front has it right here coming out through the plastic on both sides same exact thing slide it on and you have yourself an anchor point which makes life a lot easier the way that i used to strap it when i didn't have the lower door inserts was from the cage here to the loop here which worked pretty decent but now since I do have the lower door inserts I can't just put a strap like that so I had to I had to find other ways to strap it down so originally I bought soft loop straps which you don't need to do strap down and it is ready to go actually pretty sweet for the fact that it'll work with any straps meaning if you just have the hook if you have the carabiner style if you have a soft loop um, it's all gonna work the reason I got the soft loops was because there's really nothing to hook on here too so I had to go across the frame in some places the reason why I didn't like that was because it was sliding all over it actually started wearing down the powder coat where I kept on strapping it to so uh, now I don't have to worry about it, including in the front where I would strap it down here. It actually started wearing down the powder coat, which right now I don't have any contact with the powder coat. So things are, things are definitely nicer this way. Definitely check out these brackets because they make life a lot easier. They just give you a nice solid hookup point at kemimoto.com. I'll put a link in the description for you guys and a coupon code that you guys could use to get these. So if you guys are thinking about the Luma trailer for your Can-Am more for whatever reason, honestly, it's a great trailer. The only thing I would trade this trailer for is the double axle car hauler, aluminum version, just so I could haul around that pig and maybe my Jeep. And also a project that we're starting out pretty soon here on the channel, which is gonna be a crazy build. 
one of the things that I wanted to mention was I've had a bunch of trolls on my previous video when I just got the trailer uh, go off and tell me a bunch of different crap that this trailer is not going to work. It was a bunch of crap in the comment section. People literally do not know what they're talking about, but they do have to run their keyboard. One of the things somebody said was the trailer constantly wants to tilt back. Well, that's not true because as you can tell it's not latched and it doesn't want to tilt back and even if i stand on the back of the trailer it does not want to tilt back and believe it or not now this was my mistake but um after a long hot day of dunes i actually loaded up the trailer strapped everything in and i totally forgot to latch this and I ended up driving for like 200 something miles with it completely unlatched and it was perfectly fine. I did latch it as soon as I noticed it that I didn't latch it at a gas station. I jumped on it and latched it but that 250 miles that I drove with it unlatched there was no sway or tilt or any of that. It wasn't making any noise and Luckily, I was able to spot that and fix the issue. Now, that just goes to show you how well this trailer works with the Can-Am X3. The only recommendation I would make when you're buying a trailer is to make sure that you get a trailer bigger than what you need it for. Now, if you're getting a two-seater, look into possibly getting a trailer that'll fit a four-seater because you never know down the road you might have to upgrade. And also, as far as the width goes, for example, for me, I'm gonna be taking my 64 inch machine and converting it to a 72 inch, and I'll still have plenty of room on my trailer. I would definitely recommend the Luma Till trailer. It makes life so much easier. I wanna thank you guys for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It would definitely help me out, and I will see you guys in the next video. Later.